All right, hallelujah. Glory to the king. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, citizens of the world. This is Pastor Dow, and I'm coming to you with the truth, and it's going to be the truth straight way. I'm going to talk to you today about something that your churches, your organizations, your ministers, your pastors, your elders, your bishops, your deacons, your mamas, your daddies, your husband, your wife, whoever it is, whoever you fancy to be a leader or somebody in authority in the New Testament church, if I can use those words, I'm going to talk to you today about something that you would never hear, never hear spoken about, preached on in your organization, or your ministry, or your churches. And it's just the same too, but I'm going to stick only in the New Testament to show you that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And also I'll quote you Malachi 3.6. That I am the Lord thy God, and I change not. Therefore, you sons of Jacob, I'm not consumed. So the reason why I quoted those two is to let you know that the Most High is the same. He doesn't change. No matter what, I don't care how much time change, people change and stuff, but he is consistent. His message is consistent. The problem today is we've changed the message. And when the message has been changed, the people has been changed. I'm going to talk to you about a message today. Speak to you about a message today. That the churches will not touch with a million foot pole. And here we go. Luke, the 14th chapter. Are you there? Luke, the 14th chapter. And we're going to start at verse 25. And let's go ahead and expedite this and get busy. And there were great multitudes with him and turned and said unto him, If a man come unto me, this is Jesus doing the talking, and hate not his father, his mother, and his wife, and his children, and his brother, and his sisters, and yea, his own life also, he cannot be my disciples. You see, that rules out 99% of you so-called professing Christians today. Because you can forget about hating your mother and your father. Many of you would take your mother and your father over Christ. If you don't believe me, let's see how you do with the rest of this message. And whosoever doeth not bear his cross and come after me, he cannot be my disciple. Isn't that something? That's what Christ says. And then he goes on to say, now you think about this. If you're going to build a tower, are you not going to sit down first and see if you have sufficient enough funds? You're going to count to see if you have enough to able to finish it? Let's go to verse 33. So likewise, whosoever he be of you that forsaketh not all that he hath, he cannot be my disciple. You see, that strikes out 99.9% of you so-called professing, lying, pseudo-Christians. You're not going to forsake nothing for nobody. You definitely ain't going to forsake your house, your home, your bank account, your money, your car. You ain't forsaking nothing for the cause of Christ because you have received the Greek influence upon this world. You're in bondage. You don't even know it. Let's go to another scripture over here. Let's go to, let's see if Jesus is consistent in the same. Luke the 12th chapter. And he says in verse 31, 32, and 33, they're going to read on right here. And verse 34. Luke 12, 31. But rather seek ye the kingdom of God, and all these things shall be added unto you. Fear not, little flock. It is the Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Sell that ye have. Give alms. Provide yourself bags which wash not old, a treasure in heaven that felleth not, where no thief approacheth, neither moth corrupted, where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Some of your treasure is in your job. Some of your treasure is in your home your occupation, your, um, uh, your career. That's what many of your treasures is. That's the reason why God can't get his just due service from you today because you got all these other things that you labor for. You cannot serve two, fa two masters. You cannot serve God and you cannot serve mammon. And many of you are chasing a dollar and you're serving mammon and that's why your life, your spiritual life is desolate when it comes to God. Amen. That's just the truth. Now, we're going to go over here in the New Covenant for us. I tell you what, let's go to Matthew, the 19th chapter, and let's read what Christ had to say right there. Matthew 19, starting at verse 16. And behold, one came unto him and said, Good master, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? And he said unto him, Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one. There is one that is God, but if thou wilt enter into life, keep the commandments. Well, they go to mint hey, there's 99% of you Christians out there because, you know, your, your preachers, your teachers, your organization, your cemetery schools, what you call theology schools, they teach you the commandments to get done away with. You don't have to keep the commandments, but nevertheless, Christ said 
to this rich young ruler right here, if you're going to enter in life, keep the commandments, especially the fourth commandment. Notice how Christ taught. And he said unto him, which, that's what the rich young ruler said. And Jesus said to him, if thou shalt do no murder. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not bear false witness. Honor thy father and thy mother. Uh, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. And the young man said unto him, all these have I kept from my youth up. What lack I? See, that's like many of you people today. You think you got Jesus because there's certain things you think that you're doing. And you say, hey, I've done all this. What lack I yet? Well, Christ is going to get to the center of the matter. He get to the heart of the matter right now. Because you see, what Jesus did was name the last six commandments, which has to do with service to your fellow man. He didn't name the first four, which has to do with your love for God. I mean, you are not going to love God because you're not going to keep his commandments. You're not going to keep his Sabbath day. I don't care what nobody says. I don't care what this Bible says. You can't find Sunday or justification for Sunday anywhere in this Bible. But you will be deceived by traditions of men, vain babblings, um, um, false doctrines, false teachings and preachings, um, pseudo lies where people come up with some eloquent saying. But you will not stick with this book. You will not find Sunday nowhere in this book. Nowhere in this Israelite heritage book. So the rich young ruler thought that he had Christ, but he didn't. And Jesus said to him, if you, yeah, I tell you what, you want to be perfect? Go sell that you have. Give to the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven, and come and follow me. Now, who is the poor? The poor, according to what Jesus said, are the ones that have the gospel preached to them are the ones who follow in his example. You see, whether you like it or not, there's a, see, as long as we're here straightway, we are a beacon and we are a light to this whole entire world that it can't be done. We've done all this that Christ is saying. We done sold what we had. That's right. And we're doing it for the cause of Christ. We've done it and doing it now till today. So you ain't going to do it. You know why? Because your possessions got you. You don't have your possessions. And that's the truth. I'm in the New Testament now. You say, hey, Feast days done away with, all this other stuff done away with, let's see if you can obey Christ. The command is done away with, let's see if you can obey Christ. You see, you do away with everything, but you can't even obey Christ. And then he says, huh? But when a young man heard that saying, he went away sorrowfully, for he, said, for he had great possessions. Then said Jesus unto his disciples, Verily I say unto you, a rich man shall hardly enter into the kingdom of heaven. And again I say unto you, it is easier for a camel to go through an eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of heaven. So you rich people, you're doomed because you will not give your money for the cause of Christ to the poor, the ones who have the gospel preached to them, who are exalting the kingdom of God here on this earth right now. So don't look for heaven to be your home because it is not going to be. Your money is being your salvation here on this earth. So you might as well enjoy it while you got it. But if you happen to be rich and you do want to sow to the kingdom of God and you do want to put into the kingdom and you want to advance and you want to be a disciple of Christ, well, here we are here straight away. Just thought I'd throw it out there. It'd be better to be giving it to us to somebody who's banned the gospel and all you people out there pretending like you are and you're really truly not. But anyway, and when the disciples heard it, they were exceedingly amazed and saying, who then can be saved? I mean, think about it. If this rich young man can keep the commandments, if this rich young man is living an impeccable life all of his life, and then in the end, he can't even sell what he has because he his possessions, he got so many of them, and he can't go in. The disciples are appalled, man. Lord, God, then who then can be saved? Well, I tell you what, with God is impossible. With man is impossible, but with God, all things are possible. But if you people can't obey sell that you have, you can forget about it. And that's New Testament. We're staying there. We're going to go over here to the book of Acts. We're going to try to expedite this teaching here because of the time limits that are here on YouTube. Acts chapter 2, starting at verse 43. I told you, you won't hear this gospel. You won't hear none of this part of the message preached. This is in time perspective number two. Acts chapter 2, verse 43. And fear came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were done by the apostles. And all that believed. Do you believe? Do you really truly believe? Do you believe? Hallelujah. Do you believe? Do you believe? We're together. Well, most of you people out there believe you still ain't together. You go to the same church, you ain't together. And then all things common. Oh, now we can forget about that now. We ain't going to do that now. See, that, that's our attitude today. You ain't got nothing in common. 
You go to church once a week or twice a week, you show up, oh, praise the Lord, hallelujah, and that's about it. That's it. You definitely ain't going to follow this. This is the gospel, though. It's what Jesus preached, what the apostles preach, and this is what Pastor Dow preaches and teaches because we're getting ready for this end time. Hallelujah. And so their possessions and goods imparted them to all men as every man had needed. And they continued daily with one accord in the temple, breaking bread from house to house. They eat their meat with gladness, singles of heart, praising God, having favor with all people. And the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. Well, ain't too many people going to be added then, is it? Because ain't too many people going to be saved because don't too many people want this. People don't want this message. People don't want this Holy Ghost. People don't want none of this. All right? Acts chapter 4, verse 32. And the multitude of them that believe were of one heart, one heart, and one soul. And neither said all of the things which he possessed was his own, but they had all things common. What about your church today? Huh? Y'all ain't got nothing in common, do you? Nope, nothing. <laughs> you got nothing in common. Woo! Good message, though, isn't it? And, it, and great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ and great grace was upon them all. So that's the reason why I mean you people don't have any power today because you will not obey this gospel. And you don't have any witness to the resurrection of Christ, nothing more than your mental sin because you don't have this gospel, this message right here. Neither was there any among them that lacked for as many as were possessors, past tense, of houses, sold them and bought the prices of things which were sold and laid them down at the apostles' feet and distribution were made unto every man as according he had need. Now most of you say, well, there ain't no apostles here today. We ain't got no apostles. Well, you got pastors. You got elders, you got teachers, don't you? You got preachers, you got ministers, you got men, don't you? Yeah, you do. You got the elders. Yeah, you, oh, yes, you do. You got people. Don't let anything. See, you can come up with all kinds of excuses to not obey this book. Nevertheless, it still don't change. Well, when you go on to Acts chapter 5 and you read on, you'll find out there's a story about a man named Ananias and Sapphira. So the truth is, many of you folk, you ain't going into the kingdom. Mental sent Christianity is not going to get it. Blessed are not the hearers of the word, but the doers of the word. They are the ones that shall be blessed. You folks, you've been deceived, you've been duped, you've been had. That's all there's to it. Now, many of you people out there say, well, you know, Pastor God, we ain't got to keep the commandments done away with. We ain't got to keep the feast days done away with. We ain't got to do all that. We ain't got to do this. We ain't got to do that. You've done away with so much stuff. Why even call yourself a Christian? Why even call yourself an Israelite? Because you don't believe nothing. Why? What, what are you doing? You're only deceiving yourself. You're not deceiving him. He don't change. He never changes. He, you're not deceiving him. You see, it's a May, what's today? Memorial Day, Labor Day, or something like that. I guarantee you keeping that. You won't see many of you people who call yourself a higher standard of believer. You won't do the Christmas and Easter and Sunday, but I guarantee you keep Memorial Day. I guarantee you keep Independence Day. Yeah, you do. I guarantee you keep New Year's Day. I guarantee you any day will give you a day off your job. You will keep, won't you? You hypocrites. Well, I'm just a hard-hitting, straightforward preacher. Don't mix the words for nobody. Nobody. That's what Christ said. I gave you what Jesus said. I gave you what the apostles said. The question is, is are you going to obey? I will tell you right now. There's not many people out there you can trust, especially men of God, with this kind of message today. You can't even trust yourself. Because see, many of you, you judge men of God, but yet you yourself can't even live up to what the gospel says. Instead of everybody going around judging everybody, how about you do this first? How about you make sure that you live a, a life and your life, your character, your holiness is impeccable so that you can show all the people that are not living like this, show them an example so that they can. Well, anyway, I just thought I'd give you entire perspective number two. That's the part you wouldn't want to hear. Who knows? Maybe this be the cutoff point that maybe many of you want to want to hear the rest of the wisdom that's being shared. But nevertheless, it's still the truth. It's the true straight way. May the Lord Jesus bless you is my prayer. I hope your heart is encouraged. The king is coming. By the way, you want to enter into life? Sell that you have. The poor is the one to have the gospel preached to them. Hallelujah. You need wisdom. You need knowledge. And you need understanding. I told you this is going to be a message that your churches, your pastors, your elders, your preachers, they're not going to touch with a million foot pole. Gotcha. I hope you can obey. That's really, truly my heart. I hope you can obey. The king coming.